In Taiwan, there's an ecosystem rarely seen in the world, located underneath the ocean surface in a popular scenic area. It's an active volcano with high temperature hydrothermal vents that spew sulfuric acid and extremely toxic volcanic gases. Steam and sulfur from the ubiquitous hydrothermal vents fill the water. It's a forbidding environment, just like the wasteland resulting from a volcanic eruption. But there's a species of crab that thrives here, making its habitat near the scalding water of the hydrothermal vents. It is a crab on the walk's edge. For many Elan people who work in Taipei, Guishan Island is a source of nostalgia. Whether it's looking out from the eastbound train, driving westbound along the coastal highway, or even returning home via the Shueshan Tunnel, when you see Guishan Island, it means you've entered Elan. When the ancestors came to settle in Elan, the first thing they saw as they rounded Sandiao Cape was probably this same distinctive landform located nine kilometers out to sea, across from the Lanyang Plain. Guishan Island gets its name from its resemblance to a turtle floating in the ocean. The turtle's head and shell were formed by two volcanoes, while the tail is a long, narrow sandbar. The volcanoes erupted about 7,000 years ago, creating sulfur blowholes, hot springs, and cold springs that still remain. In Tocha, from which Guishan Island is visible in the distance, there's the famous Changu Festival, directly linked to the settlement of the Lanyang Plain. It's also closely connected to the fishermen working in nearby waters who rely on the ocean for their livelihoods. The Changu Festival is held by the Zhongyuan Ceremony Association of Tochang. Chairman Lin Lezi knows a lot about both the festival and Ilan history. Ilan 當時的強姑的話,本來這個旗幟都是在船上的。當時的船是 According to local elders, the Xuanfeng flag used in Changu originally referred to the flag flown in Wuling village on the outer harbor. But later, Zhonglun Ford on the inner harbor thought that their flag was the only true Xuanfeng flag. In order to resolve the dispute, after that, all of the 13 villages' flags were considered Xuanfeng flags. No matter which flag was cut down during the festival, whoever cut it down first was the winner. <laughs> The Tochang Changu Festival is one of the larger and more distinctive events among Taiwan's local festivals, something rarely seen in the world. Twelve massive pine poles, all more than 10 meters tall, support a platform called the Gu Pong or Dao Ta Pong. On this stand 13 clusters of bamboo poles with a separate village flag fluttering atop each of the clusters. A thick layer of beef lard is smeared on the poles to increase the difficulty. The teams participating in Changu must give it their all for the glory of their villages and their team. Fearing neither danger nor difficulty, they struggle to climb the poles, intent upon taking the Xuanfeng flag perched on top. <laughs> The 
For the locals, the Xunfeng flag possesses great significance. Apart from safety and smooth sailing, whoever climbs the pole and grabs the Xunfeng flag will be prosperous. A ship flying the Xunfeng flag will be protected on its voyage and return home fully laden with goods. Thus, Changu has witnessed the dangers and hardships experienced by those who made their living in Elan's waters. But isn't this also indirect confirmation of the tricky ocean environment surrounding Guishan Island? Changu Festival used to be held to protect the safety of local residents and pray for an abundant fishing season. But now, this unique folk event and abundant fishery also hold an appeal for tourists. Convenient transportation has narrowed the urban-rural gap. Here, visitors can enjoy surfing and other water activities to their heart's content. And because the marine resources here are so brilliant, visitors can experience an intellectual tour, going whale watching, and getting to know the marine ecology in a relaxed, comfortable setting. The whole family, young and old, can go to the harbor for a seafood feast and purchase fresh fish. These are all the economic benefits brought by Elan's unique marine resources. As visitors enjoy the plethora of seafood, they probably never stop to consider why Elan's seafood is so abundant and varied. And they wouldn't know there is a species of crab living beside hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor. However, for experts researching marine ecology, this place holds an irresistible attraction. Crab expert He Ping He comes frequently to Elan's Da Xi and Gongfang harbors to study crabs. Uh, 这个大西移港, Relative to Guishan Island, the area extending north to Sanjiao Cape and south to Nanfang Ao forms the large body of water known as Ilan Bay. So long as you're in Ilan, you can see Guishan Island from almost any angle. What other secrets lie in Ilan Bay that tantalize the scholars? Ilanwan,这个地方,刚好有南洋溪,那个大河川下来,带下来很多营养源,所以海洋的生态系呢,这边可以造就很多重湖的生物,到这个小虾小鱼到大鱼都有。
With such an excellent marine environment, the chances of finding crabs living near the geothermal vents should be very good. One thing's for sure, because of these advantages, Dashi Harbor has become one of the most important fish markets in northern Taiwan. Unlike cuisine-minded visitors in search of a good meal, there's a group of people who search for treasure amid piles of fish discarded by others. Zhang Xianzong from the Crab Museum is one of them. Because the Crab Museum focuses on the collection and introduction of crabs, Zhang Xianzong frequently goes to the auction center run by the Elan Fishermen's Association, as well as fish market vendors' stalls, to see if they have crabs for the museum's collection. Zhang also asks some of the fishermen to keep certain species of crabs for him. Lastly, he sifts through piles of trash fish discarded by the fishermen, hoping to get lucky. The bustling crowd of fishermen and fish buyers makes the fishing village spring to life. In a twinkling of an eye, Gungfang and Dashi harbors, small harbors on the Ilan coast that many Taiwanese might not even know about, have become recognized globally as an important base for crab research. Even more mind-boggling is the fact that of the 7,000 crab species known in the world, Taiwan has already discovered about 700 species. Little Taiwan possesses one-tenth of the world's crab species. In terms of density per unit area, Taiwan's abundance of crab species is superior to Australia's Great Barrier Reef. This is a rare feat indeed. And according to a study conducted by the Crab Museum, about 80% of Taiwan's crab species can be found in Eli. Thus, this area has given birth to the world's first crab-themed museum. The area's advantageous geography and proximity not only gave rise to the museum, but also crab research. Because the crab museum and scholars have a mutually beneficial relationship, the area has an international reputation as a key location for crab research. Professor Peter Ng of National University of Singapore, a world-renowned crab expert, often comes here to do research. Peter 有沒有什麼特別的東西直接拿給大家看 Therefore, because of the mutual sharing between scholars and cooperation in research, the superior environment of Ilan Bay and the local waters 
as well as the bay's harbors that are responsible for the distribution of fishery goods have become an international hotspot for crustacean research. Hoping Ho explains, from an academic perspective, Dashi Harbor's importance as a research base. So,研究调查,因为海洋生物的话 Perhaps this is the reason why we can discover so many rare and precious crabs in the harbors. Twenty years ago, in nearby Gongfang Harbor, Ho Ping He discovered a species of crab able to live beside scalding hot hydrothermal vents. Oh,整个网机呢,上面还找,那个重量增加的,那这个,对他们,他们作业影响就会蛮大的,所以他就需要呢,把它拿上来清楚。那刚好我们的偶然机会,沿着海边呢,沿着那个移港,从大西移港下
A specimen of the crab discovered by Ho Peng Ho was taken to National Singapore University for further confirmation. It was compared to a testudinata specimen kept at the Tokyo National Museum. The result of the comparison confirmed that the crab discovered in Taiwan was different from Japan's testudinatus. Only then was it discovered that the crab found here in Taiwan was a different new species. Now, once you confirm a new species, how do you go about naming it? The discoverer of the Taiwanese hydrothermal crab, Ho Peng Ho, said. As it turned out, Guishan Island had an ecosystem rarely seen in the world. Because of its uniqueness, the Taiwanese hydrothermal crab was confirmed as a new species many years later than it should have been. Guishan Island had human inhabitants from 1820 to 1977, a period of 158 years. But because things like water, electricity, sanitation, and education lagged behind the main island of Taiwan, life was more difficult. With a coordinated effort by many related government agencies, in 1977, Guishan Island's residents were all relocated to the main island of Taiwan. The same year, Guishan Island became a military control zone. From then on, travel to the island was strictly controlled. It wasn't until 2000, due to the national government's tourism policy and aggressive lobbying from the local government, that military control was removed and tourism restored. The island was included as part of the Northeast and Ilan Coast National Scenic Area under the Tourism Bureau and positioned as a marine eco-park. Because of the long period under military control, Guishan Island had always possessed an air of mystery. Whether it was the island's ecology or surrounding ocean ecology, both were things people rarely got a glimpse of. On this day, more than 30 years after leaving Guishan Island, Guishan Borough Warden Jian Ying Jun prepared to return home, finally laying to rest feelings of nostalgia for a place he could see but not touch. <laughs> From the old borough warden's words, we learn that Guishan Island had abundant catches as well as a brilliant marine ecology. Whether it was traditional net pulling or purely human powered fishing boats, when they went out fishing, the catches were always substantial. But living conditions on the island were poor, so with heavy hearts, they left Guishan Island, never imagining that their next trip back wouldn't be for another 30 plus years. Returning to the island, the old borough warden immediately burned some incense to tell the gods and ancestors, I'm back. He used the most direct means to express his nostalgia the curls of smoke conveying the longing of the old borough warden and countless former residents. Lasuel 
个迄个学校遐一条叫做大路，啊，即两边哦，有一个有一寡咧较早的厝啦，哦，啊，即一边过一百空六间拢伫伫即两边。To put it simply, the old borough warden was filled with longing. Perhaps we today have no way of imagining what Guishan Island looked like in the early days, but from his words, we can easily sense the depth of his feeling for Guishan Island. Once the island was open to tourism, the former residents finally had a chance to return. Of course, they wanted to go back to see the tree they had always considered sacred, the Taiwan persimmon that had been their guardian spirit. This thing, oh, it's been around for eight hundred years. Ah, the tree, oh, the tree, Guishan Island, the tree, oh, it's not a doctor, it's not a doctor, it's not a health professional. Ah, people, ah, these people, ah, they are sick, oh. 拢是，主要是拢庙遐拜，门神庙吼，啊，加迄啰靠靠一张迄啰门旗公。啊，囡仔吼，囡仔了，早些啊闹，大人一定爱给娶起来迄啰门旗公家家，好好了门旗公做囝。啊，每年迄啰农历七月七七咯，拢去美国啦，啊，了了关节，啊，从钱啊呢起来接拜。To the former residents of Guishan Island, the Taiwan persimmon tree is especially significant. But actually, it's also an important ecological landmark, because Guishan Island is the Taiwan persimmon's northernmost distribution point. Also, because Guishan Island has been cut off from the outside world for so long, it has low elevation primeval forest found nowhere else in Taiwan. On the island's numerous cliffs, there are natural populations of saw palmetto. Because saw palmetto trees have a beautiful shape, they are often used to decorate walkways and courtyards. Natural wild populations such as these have never been discovered on the main island of Taiwan. They are mostly distributed on the cliffs above Guishan Island's Guiwei Lake. In spring, Taiwan lilies bloom in profusion on Guishan Island. Thus, the island has evolved from the early days when life was inconvenient to the period of military control when most people were unable to travel to the island to its current status as an ecotourism hotspot. And the thing that we and many visitors find amazing is that the geological activity hidden beneath the surrounding ocean surface. Is even more brilliant than the environment on the island. Compared to the visitors who come and go, Professor Li Shaoxing has made numerous trips to Guishan Island for research purposes. He often jokingly refers to himself as the island's owner. Actually, he seems more like the best spokesman for the promotion of Guishan Island geology education. Surprisingly, the island's mysterious origin is hidden in an unassuming stairway paved with local stones. 这这就很明显，来来来，这有没有？这就是那个石英，啊、哦，因为啊，通常你做定年的方法哈、哦，定不出那么细，对啊，所以呢，台大地质系的老师现在都是大教授了。<笑>当时十几年前哈、哦，他们就利用这种啊，这是这是我们通常的那个石英啊。哦然后它是代表说，它火山喷发的时候啊，然后这些石英呢被那个熔岩把它包住了，所以它可以利用那个，就是说它包住的啊，然后它解析它的那个熔岩的程度啊，然后它可以定出年代啊。那十几年前陈一高定出来说是七千年。An age of 7,000 years means the volcano beneath Guishan Island is still active. In terms of volcanic eruptions, 7,000 years is very young. Before this, we'd been taught that Guishan Island was already an extinct volcano. 
So when Chen Yugao's research concluded that Guishan Island's last eruption was 7,000 years ago, it wasn't announced right away. Li Xing, whose research focuses on benthic geology, told Chen Yugao he once witnessed volcanic activity on the seabed near Guishan Island, and moreover, that it was very active. After further research, nearly everyone agreed that the wrapped quartz was proof that Guishan Island erupted 7,000 years ago. Hoho 所以这是都是有很多人研究的结果 This research took a dramatic turn, making the question of Guishan Island's mysterious origin just as compelling as that of the Taiwanese hydrothermal crab. Limited by our preconceived notions of Guishan Island's geology, the results of the research rectifying the island's volcanic status couldn't be immediately announced. It was a good thing we had the strong backing of Professor Lee's research. Otherwise, many people still wouldn't have believed that Guishan Island was an active volcano. Therefore, Professor Lee continues to promote understanding of Guishan Island's geology, hoping that visitors to Guishan can experience an intellectual journey. The most direct evidence of Guishan Island's volcanic eruption, though obvious, is often overlooked. Uh 有一些是它的地层的节理 Apart from the evidence provided by the lava, after conducting numerous studies, scientists found the volcano's crater was probably located at peak 401. There was also another volcano located at Guizhou, with parts that had disappeared into the ocean. Thus, Professor Li Xing focused his research on the benthic volcano near Guishan Island. After doing some research, he discovered there are at least 70 volcanoes within a 60 nautical mile radius of Guishan Island, of which more than 10 are active. Moreover, Guishan Island is an extension of a benthic volcano chain. In Guizhou, there are numerous shallow ocean hydrothermal vents. Milky white hydrothermal springs and bubbles surge from the ocean floor year round, creating a huge swath of white on the ocean surface. Clearly, the volcanic activity underwater is even more brilliant and intense than that above ground. Diving instructor Zhang Yuming has been shooting footage in these waters for a long time and assisted many scientists with scuba diving and sample collection. This time, he's preparing for a dive in Guishan Island's Guishou Bubbling Spring. He will help staff from the Lanyang Museum survey the island's benthic volcano, as well as Taiwanese hydrothermal crabs that live near the benthic volcano's constantly erupting hydrothermal vents. 其實因為之前我們博物館裡面已經有在做一些硫磺怪方蟹的報導
。好，我们待会要下这个前点哈，大概深度大概十四到十七米左右。啊，所以说我们待会下去的时候，因为能见度可能不好，我们尽量聚在一块。哦，那下潜的时候都要注意哈，就尽量快一点点，因为有流有点流，好，速度快一点，别吓到我。那下底之后再集合。那还有我们在前进当中的，尽量手不要去触底。因为那个有一些地方涌泉口温度蛮烫的，它最高温到一百二十一度。Diving in the waters near Guizhou is very dangerous. When bubbling springs and sulfur springs erupt from the benthic volcano and meet the seawater, sulfuric crystals are formed, filling the water with smoke and bubbles that make visibility extremely poor. And with the Kuroshio passing through. The nearby ocean currents are very powerful. Therefore, diving teams must always be very careful. The sight of the benthic volcanic vents are amazing to behold. Li Jiaoxing tells us that places such as Guishan Island. Where you can dive and observe shallow ocean benthic volcanoes close up are extremely special and rare in the world. Unusual,很少。夏威夷大概有这个前台，但是夏威夷这个体系跟我们这个不一样。啊，你那个夏威夷的话，你还要啊从夏威夷你还要坐坐飞机到那个大岛去。哎，然后大岛你到了海边，它
Biologists thought that hydrothermal vent ecosystems generated energy without sunlight. Via chemical synthesis, sulfide bacteria would turn hydrogen sulfide, CO2, and oxygen into carbohydrates, namely organic matter. The crabs use this as food, thus forming a food chain. But scientists now have made new discoveries about the Taiwanese hydrothermal crabs' living environment. Regarding the differences between shallow and deep ocean hydrothermal vent ecosystems, Li Jiaoxing offered this explanation. Chisu 它有一種特殊的細菌,叫高溫細菌,它可以分解這個硫化物,然後硫化物可以帶給其他的生物,然後它那個community就是那個生態就很特殊。Therefore, Guishan Island Shallow Ocean Hydrothermal Ecosystem is a photosynthetic ecosystem reachable by sunlight. It's a system where producers like plants and algae use the sunlight to convert the CO2 and water into organic matter, completely different from the deep ocean non-photosynthetic system. But in such a harsh ocean environment as this, what do large populations of Taiwanese hydrothermal crabs rely on for survival? Tazin 或者流亡的新史的這些流亡生物,所以它很特殊的地方就在這邊了。另外因為它這種生態習性是大量成立絕對生活在這種啊熱潛旁邊的這種洞穴裡面,那我覺得是啊有流亡的地方,所以中年人
，好，我只要不你看它末端，它有还有还有长的毛，对不对？你看它抓那个啊硫磺那个地上面的那些啊那个石日碎屑的话，我们这个毛呢对它来讲可能也还有帮助的作用。哦，那脚很扁平啊，这个它它适合在那个攀爬在那个缝隙里面啊，这个都构造都有关系的。In order to adapt to the harsh environment, the body structure of the Taiwanese hyperthermal crab has naturally evolved a set of survival tools. Apart from leg hairs that help it snag tiny plankton food debris, scientists have already proven that Taiwanese hydrothermal crabs have evolved a digestive system. That unties the sulfide's toxicity. They use oxidation to turn the hydrogen sulfide into non-toxic thiosulfate, which is then gradually excreted. With regard to the mating and reproductive habits of the Taiwanese hydrothermal crab, further research is necessary. However, in July and September of 2012, the film crew recorded a rarely seen oviparous female crab. And small crabs that had just gone from megalopa to juvenile stage. They also suspected that Taiwanese hydrothermal crabs eat sulfur. So the film crew and some of the scientists wondered if Taiwanese hydrothermal crabs and organisms from deep ocean hydrothermal ecosystems rely on similar bacteria to break down sulfides. But these findings require further scientific research. Before the ecological mysteries of the Taiwanese hydrothermal crab can be revealed, Guishan Island's natural eco landscapes are indeed Taiwan's treasures. As for scientific research on nearby benthic volcanoes and ecological mysteries of shallow ocean hydrothermal vents, the participation of more earth science and biology researchers is needed. This will allow the rarely seen and unique ecological resources of Guishan Island to become more widely known.